Hi, this is a railgun update video. If you recall the railgun video, we have this multiple stage railgun. And what I did as a proof of concept is developed one of those stages. And what you see here is a neodymium magnet, just one stage, one. This is a three inch by half inch by one inch wide neodymium magnet. There's an insulator here so that there's it's a little clear piece of plastic to make sure the neodymium magnet does not contact with the rails, and that no current goes through the magnet. And then I have one rail here, one rail here, and in here's a little slot for the armature that has brass contacts on the edge to make sure that the current picked up by the armature, I'm sorry, that the current picked up by the armature is as close to the edge current of the magnet as possible. And the armature for this little device is just basically a, a little bar of brass and with a little tail on it to hopefully make it go straight. It doesn't work. It, it always wants to veer off to the side and I'll explain why. Um, we're going to demonstrate this, show that it actually works. This isn't going to be where we're going to end up with the railgun experiment because in doing this I've developed better ways to use the, the magnets. Essentially we're going to try to use the magnets as the rails. And that's one of the things I commented to about the Brolife and experiments. So let me put the camera on the tripod and we'll show you this thing actually work. And we're just going to drive it from a simple little 6 volt magnet. So don't expect there to be this big uh, fire and fury. This is just going to prove that we give a little bit of motion out of the armature. Um, let me put the camera on the tripod. Okay, let me reiterate again that this isn't a full up railgun experiment. This is just a little test to prove the concept. Okay, what I'm going to do is just put the little brass bar into the end, into the rails. Now one of the problems with this little thing is that just a simple corrosion or tarnish on the brass prevents contact. So it may not work right off the bat. I may have to Okay, now watch if I put a little pressure down to make it contact. See it move? Okay, so that's one of the big problems. That's why we're going to do this with 200 volts because even if there's a little bit of tarnish on the armature, uh, 200 volts should surely break through any kind of tarnish or even a little bit of air gap that might be there. So our real full up rail gun is going to be 200 volts and we're also going to use um, what do you call it, conductive greases to help the conductivity. Because as you saw, if I could make contact, this thing with only a 6 volt battery works pretty damn good. Okay, it's just the, the, the armature making contact. Now just to prove that the magnet has something to do with it, hold on, let me go get a screwdriver. It's tough getting a screwdriver in here. Damn it, it in there. Okay, so we're going to take the magnet out. That's just the insulating. Put my microphone back on. Okay, now we're going to put the armature in. See, it doesn't even want to go. That's better. Again, with the magnet back in, you can see it go. Again, I'll take the magnet out. Okay, see, so we don't get any motion. 
at all. What all I'm doing is putting a little pressure on it to give it contact. I do the same thing when the magnet's in. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on it just to make contact. And you can see even with a little bit of pressure that is able to move out with the magnet in there. So the magnet is contributing the rail currents here. So anyway, that's the demonstration of the rail gun. Uh, I don't want to call it a prototype, it's more of a proof of concept thing, showing that the new DNA magnets being supplying the rail current actually does in fact work. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience and your patronage.